Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. Today, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at the 2023 Mini Cooper S Countryman. This particular Mini actually belongs to my wife, so big thanks to her for letting me borrow it for a while. We both love Minis. I've had a few myself over the years, but it's been a long time. I mean, it's been years since I've had a Mini featured on the channel, so I've been really looking forward to bringing this video to you guys. It's going to be a lot of fun. As with all of my reviews, I'm going to cover all of the ins and outs and take this thing on a thorough drive. I'll also get a bunch of sound clips. There's a whole lot of stuff to cover, so without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up and let her run. The Mini Countryman is currently in its second generation, which launched for the 2017 model year. It competes in the premium compact crossover segment and is Mini's most popular offering. The Countryman has a unique place amongst its competitors with an expressive retro-futuristic design, impressive driving dynamics and loads of personalization and premium amenities. The Countryman was most recently refreshed for the 2021 model year. In the few model years since, changes have been minimal and largely pertain to equipment changes, colors, and special editions. This generation is a bit larger than its predecessor, so there's more passenger and cargo room, but proportionally I think the dimensional changes dramatically improved overall aesthetics. This generation also saw the introduction of a new range of powertrains, plus further refinements to the optional all-four all-wheel drive system. Despite being the brand's largest vehicle offering, the Countryman is still instantly recognizable as a Mini. It features design elements that are typical of the brand, including a clear three-way structure when looking at it from the side as well as short overhangs, large wheel arches, and a downward increase in width. Precise contours across the surfaces create an attractive play of light and shade that underscores the athletic shaping and the upright stature of the body. This generation also goes further in terms of the countryman's versatility, agility, and premium character. Redesigned front and rear bumpers lend a more refined appearance than in years prior. The redesigned radiator grille features hexagonal contours that are typical of Mini and it's surrounded by a slim lined one piece chrome frame. The grille's air intake is subdivided by three horizontal struts on the Cooper. On the Cooper S, the grille has a bold hexagonal grille pattern with a red S and a single chrome strut. The redesign of the front fascia also added standard LED headlights. The distinctive, asymmetrically rounded contours of the headlights are accentuated by a continuous band of light that takes on the function of both daytime driving lights and turn signals. A turning light included in the functional range of the headlights provide clear illumination of the side areas of the road when turning or changing lanes. LED fog lamps are also standard, featuring a light band in the upper semicircle of each fog lamp that serves as a parking light. The rear fascia also enhances the more powerful and contemporary look of the Countryman with redesigned bumper trim. All rear lighting functions feature LED technology as standard, while the graphic structure of the taillights reflect the pattern of the Union Jack, paying homage to Mini's origins as a distinctively British brand. The piano black exterior option, which is now available on all Countrymen's, finishes the headlamp surrounds, rear lights, radiator grille and side indicator scuttles in high gloss black instead of chrome, along with the door handles and the model lettering on the luggage compartment lid. 
Additional identification features and high gloss black are available from the range of original mini accessories. With 2024 models now starting to roll out, the Countryman is available in four models. The $32,650 Cooper, the $32,900 Cooper S, the $42,700 Cooper SE All-4 Plug-In Hybrid, and the $43,800 John Cooper Works All-4. The all-four all-wheel drive system is also offered on the Cooper and Cooper S, which would otherwise come standard with front-wheel drive. On the Cooper S, all-wheel drive is a $2,100 option. Each model has sub-trim levels to choose from as well. For example, the Cooper S can be had in either classic, signature, or iconic trims. The latter two are an additional $2,600 and $6,900 respectively over the classic trim. With each trim level comes additional standard features, more luxurious amenities, and more ways to personalize. This example is an iconic trim, finished in sage green metallic and accented by a white roof, white mirror caps, and white hood stripes. The iconic trim is offered with a choice between nine body colors. The roof and mirror caps can also be had body colored, but you can also opt for white, black, or silver if you wanted some extra contrast. This example is a 2023 model front wheel drive Cooper S Countryman, which started at $35,500. The iconic trim was an additional $4,625. Additional options shown here include black all-weather floor mats, an all-weather trunk mat, and a mini first aid kit. The total MSRP, including an $850 destination charge, was $41,255. The hood stripes and roof rails were dealer-added accessories. Cooper Countrymen's are fitted as standard with 17-inch alloy wheels, while the Cooper S is fitted with 18-inch wheels. With the iconic trim in particular, there are four wheel options to choose from, including two 19-inch options. These 19-inch turnstile spoke two-tone wheels are a no-cost option. The tires fitted to this example are Pirelli P0 22545 Summer Performance Run Flat Tires. Out on the road, the Countryman exhibits excellent overall manners with a taut but not overly firm ride, as well as sharp handling and a connected feel. All season tires are standard when opting for all wheel drive. All Countrymen's are offered with a temporary spare tire as a standalone option. If equipped, you also get a jack and wrench. When it comes to stopping power, standard four-wheel disc brakes with ABS and electronic brake force distribution help bring the vehicle to a stop from 60 miles an hour and about 121 feet. The pedal feel is satisfyingly firm and the brakes are quick to respond. The front discs are internally ventilated and measure 13 inches in diameter, while the rear discs are solid and measure 11 inches in diameter. All of the discs are clamped down by single piston calipers. The suspension combines the tried and tested principle of a single joint spring strut axle at the front and a multi-link rear design with a design that's optimized for weight and rigidity as well as a model specific setup. This lays the foundation for precise handling properties and maximum agility. The best part is that, despite being the big mini, the Countryman still delivers the dynamics you'd expect from the brand. It has excellent body control, even with sharp turns at the steering wheel. For even higher cornering thresholds, I'd recommend springing for the optional Dynamic Damper Control System, which, at $500, includes two program maps to alter the damping characteristics of the shock absorbers in response to driving conditions and road quality. The latest version of Mini's optional all-four all-wheel drive system not only reacts quickly and precisely to changing situations, but it's also compact and offers a high level of internal efficiency. It consists of a power takeoff unit integrated in the front axle differential, a propeller shaft leading to the rear axle, and a hang-on clutch that ensures precisely measured transmission of the drive torque to the rear wheels. 
The system's electronic control is interconnected with the dynamic stability control system, so it detects any need to adapt power distribution early on. In this way, all four optimizes both traction and stability in adverse weather and road surface conditions, as well as ensuring improved agility when taking bends and more spirited driving. The model-specific electric power steering system makes the Countryman exceptionally precise. Servotronic speed-sensitive power steering is standard, which varies the level of assistance based on your speed of travel. This makes low-speed maneuvering easier and increases stability at higher speeds. The steering ratio is 14 to 1, and it takes about 2.4 turns from lock to lock. The turning circle is 37.4 feet. The steering wheel itself comes leather-wrapped on all Countrymen's. It's a thick steering wheel with pronounced bolsters at 10 and 2 and controls on the upper spokes to operate cruise control, media, and hands-free phone systems. The steering wheel is available heated and is manually adjustable for tilt and reach. The 5-inch digital instrument display is also standard on all Countrymen's. It combines the speedometer, tachometer, fuel readout, and the driver's information system. The latter is accessed by a small button labeled BC on the turn signal stalk. As you'll see in just a bit, the colors on the screen change in response to what drive mode you have the car set to. Across the model lineup, the Countryman is offered with four engine and transmission combinations. The Cooper is powered by a 1.5 liter turbocharged 3 cylinder that develops 134 horsepower and 162 pound feet of torque. The Cooper S is powered by a 2 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder that develops 189 horsepower and 206 pound feet of torque. You can consider these as the core engines of the Countryman lineup. With front-wheel drive, both of these engines are paired to a 7-speed Steptronic dual-clutch transmission. Opting for all-wheel drive gets you an 8-speed automatic. The Countryman is currently not offered with the option of a manual transmission. For a serious jump in performance, you'll want to consider the John Cooper Works, which has a higher output version of the 2-liter engine that develops 301 horsepower and 331 pound-feet of torque. It's only offered with all-wheel drive and 8-speed transmission. On the more efficient end of the spectrum, the Countryman SE's plug-in hybrid system consists of the turbocharged 3-cylinder engine, an E-drive electric motor, and a high-voltage battery pack. The combined output is 221 horsepower and 284 pound-feet of torque, and up to 25 miles of all-electric range. The transmission for the SE is a 6-speed automatic. The SE is also fitted with a hybrid-specific all-wheel drive system as standard. It basically works by allowing the engine to power the front wheels while the electric motor acts on the rear wheels. With front-wheel drive, the Cooper S Countryman is able to accelerate to 60 miles an hour in about 7.2 seconds. Top speed is 137 miles per hour. The single twin-scroll turbocharger allows for pretty quick response, especially when switched to sport mode. All of Mini's engines are constructed using aluminum for the block and head, the latter of which integrates the exhaust manifold for more effective cooling of the exhaust gases in the turbocharging system. At the same time, crankcase cooling can be reduced when demand is low under partial load by means of a new split cooling system for the block. Fuel is delivered via high-pressure direct injection. There's double overhead camshafts with four valves per cylinder and variable valve timing. The compression ratio is 10.2 to 1. The 7-speed DCT was introduced as the standard transmission for front-wheel drive models back in 2020. Again, a manual transmission is currently not offered. There are, however, paddle shifters on the steering wheel if you want to manually change gears. You can change gears using the electronic shift lever as well, but if you simply tip it to the left while in drive and don't shift it yourself, it puts the transmission into a sport mode, which holds gears longer and delivers more emotive shifts. 
Compared to a conventional automatic, which has a torque converter, the DCT features two clutches, one handling the even gears, the other handling odd gears plus reverse. While driving, the clutches interact with each other when the car shifts, which causes one of the clutches to ready the next gear before the car needs it. In order to smooth out shifts and improve driving dynamics, the DCT's electronic control module has been programmed to analyze the driver's habits to optimize its shifts. If equipped with navigation, the data is also taken into account to improve the gearbox shift strategy on all driving situations, allowing it to downshift before you take a corner or take advantage of engine braking when you slow down. A crawl function is also included to ensure smooth operation during traffic and low speed driving. Gear spacing is also broader compared to the previously used 6 speed automatic so that the engine speeds are more varied. For improved fuel economy, the dual clutch gearbox has been optimized to work with an engine auto start stop system. In green and mid modes, the transmission also has a coast function that decouples the drivetrain when you let off the accelerator, allowing the car to roll and idle without any engine braking effects. The coasting function also takes advantage of the navigation system and the camera for certain active safety features and can automatically disable itself to utilize engine braking when taking turns or approaching an intersection. The toggle switch at the base of the center stack allows you to select between three modes, mid, sport, and green. Mid is the default setting. The drive modes alter accelerator pedal response and steering effort, the operating mode of electrically powered comfort features and the engine sound, as well as shift characteristics of the transmission. When it comes to fuel economy, a front-wheel drive Countryman is rated between 24 miles per gallon in the city and 33 miles per gallon on the highway, averaging around 28 miles per gallon. Premium fuel with an octane rating of at least 91 is required. The total tank capacity is 16.1 gallons. <laughs>
The interior of the Countryman offers excellent overall passenger space and versatility for its size. Both the driver and front passenger benefit from additional head and shoulder space compared to the previous generation, while the adjustment range of the seats have also been increased. The horizontal cockpit is reminiscent of the classic mini hardtop, only expanded upon with stretched lines and generously sized surfaces. In addition to the use of high quality materials and having excellent fit and finish overall, the modern ergonomically optimized controls contribute to the car's premium ambiance. I'm also a big fan of the little toggle switches they use in the center stack and overhead console. One of my favorite things about Mini is the level of personalization you have. Depending on the trim level, you have different options available to choose between, but all in all, there's five different upholstery options available on the Cooper S, including carbon black leatherette, a combination of cloth and leatherette, cross punch leather, premium lounge leather, and Chesterfield leather. The Chesterfield leather, as shown here, is distinguished by diamond stitching across the middle of the seats with color accent stitching and piping. The Chesterfield leather also offers additional colors, such as malt brown, indigo blue, and satellite gray. Piano black interior trim is standard, while illuminated piano black or illuminated shaded silver is available with the signature and iconic trims. This example has the standard headliner which is similar in color to the satellite gray leather. A black or anthracite headliner is also available. Power adjustable front seats are available on certain trims and include power adjustable lumbar support and a memory function on the driver's side. Heated front seats are standard along with heated mirrors and washer jets. A heated steering wheel is available as a standalone option. The narrow pillars and high seating position make for excellent outward visibility. When it comes to instruments, the early Countrymen's were set up similar to other minis at the time, with the speedometer in the center of the dash and the tachometer and information system on the steering column. The newer generation minis have since moved on to a more modern setup of having all of the instruments on the steering column with the circular control unit now incorporating a standard 8.8 inch touchscreen infotainment system. Two audio systems are available, including a standard six speaker system with AM FM tuners, HD radio and Sirius XM satellite radio. A 360 watt 12 speaker Harman Kardon Hi-Fi system is also available. The mini connected controller in the center console includes a rotary dial and shortcut buttons for various infotainment features that can help make navigating the system a bit easier. The touchscreen itself is very responsive. With the most recent refresh, the circular control unit gained a more refined appearance, with the audio control panel, the buttons for the hazard lights, and driver assistance systems now integrated more seamlessly with high gloss piano black touch surfaces. Navigation is added with the signature trim along with advanced real-time traffic data, an auto dimming rear view mirror, and power folding side view mirrors. Mini Connected includes a wide range of Mini Connected digital services and can even be used to send navigation directions from your smartphone to the Countryman. The vehicle is always online, enabling seamless integration of available Amazon Alexa voice assistant on the iconic tram. This also provides access to real-time traffic information, an internet platform and smartphone integration with wireless Apple CarPlay. The circular control unit is also available with an interactive and customizable LED ring that provides illumination and response to driving situations by way of control feedback. When equipped, it also comes with an expansive LED interior ambient lighting system and a projection of the Mini logo from the exterior mirror on the driver's side when opening and closing the door. A single zone climate control system is standard on the Cooper while a dual zone system is standard on the Cooper S. Regardless of the system equipped, there's three easy to use rotary dials and buttons in the center stack. The Countryman offers a lot of storage for a smaller vehicle, helping optimize functionality. 
In addition to door pockets and bottle holders, there's a fully fledged center console extending up to the instrument panel that offers a covered storage compartment that doubles as an adjustable armrest, two cup holders in front of the transmission lever, and a couple of additional trays in the center console with USB A and C outlets, not to mention a 12 volt power outlet. Wireless phone charging is included with the iconic tram. The charger is located inside the armrest. However, due to the small space, it would have to be a smaller phone. For example, an iPhone Max will not fit even without a case. The Countryman is equipped with a SIM card that's permanently installed. This enables the use of intelligent emergency call with automatic detection of vehicle location and accident severity as well as many teleservices. The standard rear view camera and rear park distance control can be expanded by opting for the iconic tram, which includes front parking sensors and a parking assistant feature for easy parallel parking. Optional Mini Driving Assistant includes collision warning with city braking function, camera-based adaptive cruise control, pedestrian warning with initial brake function, high beam assist, and roadside detection. Active cruise control is also available as a standalone option. With intelligent engine and braking control, adaptive cruise control helps maintain a consistent speed. An onboard camera even helps maintain a consistent distance between you and the car ahead. A pretty neat head-up display is included on the iconic tram. It projects a multicolor image onto a retractable tinted screen versus projecting an image onto the windshield. I actually prefer this layout, it's very helpful. It keeps the image just below your line of vision and allows you to monitor preferred travel information, mini navigation system directional arrows, infotainment functions, check control data, and more without unnecessary distraction. Mini also offers an alarm system as a standalone option to provide additional protection for the doors, the trunk lid, and the hood. On top of that, an ultrasonic sensor provides interior protection. As far as airbags, there's eight in total, including side curtain and front knee airbags. The current generation Countryman is 7.8 inches longer than its predecessor and approximately one inch wider. The wheelbase is longer by 2.9 inches. The rear door openings are also larger, improving the ease of ingress and egress. This growth resulted in significantly increased interior space, especially when it came to rear seat legroom. The Countryman can seat up to five people without too much difficulty. The biggest hindrance for taller folks will be the middle portion of the seat due to the height of the center floor tunnel. An array of child seat anchors enable a car seat to be placed in either of the three seating positions. The dual pane sunroof opens at the front and is fixed in the rear. Each portion has a mesh shade that can be pulled back to filter the light while still allowing some to pass through to maintain a sense of openness for the interior. The Countryman is also available without the sunroof if you prefer. The base of the rear seats can slide fore and aft longitudinally by up to 5 inches. The backrest also reclines so you can kick back and relax on a long trip. One downside is that there's no center armrest to fold down. There are however three full size adjustable headrests that can also be folded for extra visibility when not in use. I'm 5 foot 10 inches and felt there was plenty of space overall. The added adjustability definitely gives more flexibility for taller folks, but all in all the Countryman offers great accommodations for this segment. Additional rear seat amenities include adjustable air vents in the rear of the center console, two USB-C charging ports, large door storage pockets, front seat back storage pockets, overhead LED illumination, and overhead grab handles with coat hooks. Rear privacy glass is available as a standalone option. A power opening and closing tailgate is available as an option. The tailgate is light and easy enough to open manually, but it could prove to be a useful convenience if your arms are full. Behind the rear seat, you have 17.6 cubic feet of cargo space. 
The rear seat backrest is comprised of three sections that can not only be reclined like you saw a second ago, but they can also be folded flat to accommodate many different combinations of passengers and cargo. The 40-20-40 design allows you to fold down each section independently. For example, if you have thin, long items like skis, you can fold the middle section down and still have space for two rear passengers. If you remove the privacy cover and fold the rear seat completely flat, you can expand the total cargo space to 47.6 cubic feet. That's an increase of 5.4 cubic feet when compared to the previous generation Countryman. The standard storage package includes an adjustable height cargo area floor, cargo hooks and tension straps, not to mention a stainless steel insert on the loading sill for a nice touch. One unique option is the picnic bench, which is an upholstered padded cushion that folds out of the luggage compartment that provides seating atop the rear bumper for two people while the vehicle is parked. Additional trunk amenities include LED lighting on either side and a 12 volt power outlet on the right side. Well everyone, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the in-depth look at the Mini Cooper S Countryman. Be sure to stay tuned next time and leave a like down below because it really helps the videos a lot. If you haven't subscribed already, consider doing that too and make sure your notifications are turned on so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming content. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.